Hey guys, Al here. Uh, in this video we're going to go over setting up the uh, world editor uh, and how you get access to it in the latest version of the editor. So the first thing you want to do is install the DLLs, uh, either for single player or for dedicated server. I'm going to be using the dedicated server um, in this example, showing you the setup because it lets you do certain things that the single player can't do. So there are restrictions on the single player, but we'll go through that as we, uh, as I show you the features. So the first thing you want to do is go to wherever you're installing the server and find the HAL global, global file. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, if it isn't there, um, then just start the game and enter a world and the file should appear. If it doesn't appear, it probably means you haven't got the DLL installed correctly. So open it up, and here we have it here, and what we're interested in are these items here. How server active means <coughs> does, the, um, does the editor create a server connection so you can connect to it, so that can be true or false, we're going to go with true to turn it on. How server pass is the password you specify to get access to all this stuff. Uh, HAL server port is the port number that it runs on. Um, if you're hosting like a single player or uh, your dedicated server locally, that shouldn't be a problem. Just make sure any firewall ports are open. If you've uh, if you've got a dedicated server hosted with somebody else, then you might just need to ping them an email and ask them for a, another port. Most of them do it without without a problem. There's plenty to go around. And auto gen chunks is uh, something I put in there so the game, if it's not doing anything, will um, pre create a number of chunks that you specify here. So starting at 0, 0, it will work its way out. And if it hasn't already got this amount of chunks generated, it will generate them. So I've just saved to 10,000 there just as a, a nice starter. So save that and start up the game. Uh, or start up the server and then connect to it using your client. I've already got it open here. So, there we have it. Let's just. So, here we are in the game. Um, not, mu not much explored at the minute. Uh, there's a little patch over there and a bit of the city. So, I'll just jump around. I've got debug mode on. So, we just get a bit the map revealed. So there we go. Uh, so now if we start up the editor and you want to head over to the world ed editor button it's just at the bottom here. Click on that. Now let's get you out of the way. And connections is what you'll need next. So if you click on that uh, I've got a couple of items here that you won't have so if you just click on manage then you can click on this little plus icon down here and it creates a new connection, click on the new connection call it whatever you want uh, then you put in the IP address of where the game is running So um, one thing to note is if you're running it on your local computer you can't use localhost or uh, 127.0.0.1 you actually have to specify the IP address uh, so in that case for me it's that Port we set to 55555 and password is 12345. Uh, so if you click test, uh, sorry, click save, you get test appear down there and you can shut that. And there you see in the drop down it's appeared. So if you click on that, if everything goes well, it should connect. There we go. Uh, so I'll just go through a bit of the overlay, this will probably change. Uh, but in the center here, you can see this is the actual world, you can drag it about using the left mouse button. Uh, over there you can see me in the world uh, and that's represented by this list over here. Uh, over on the left hand side here this is where you can specify a position if you want to jump to it. This is your X, Y and Z, so X is east west, Y is up and down and Z is north south. And you can change these here, but you can just drag with the mouse. But you can only change height over here. So this will increment it by one. This will increment it by ten. And 
I get minus 1 and minus 10. Uh, zoom, you can drag to zoom in a bit. Uh, ignore this one, doesn't really do much anymore. Uh, keep that at 1 for now. Uh, don't play with it, don't mess about with it. Uh, over here, show entities on maps. So if you click that, there you can see uh, all the entities that are in the world appear and you can see them moving about. Uh, this is what this is getting it every second so you can change it to 10 seconds if you want to slow down how often this updates but it doesn't really make a difference um, only show players on layer um, so this will only show you items that are on the layer that you specified there 63 is quite low in fact I'm not sure if I'm not even sure if that works anymore but there we go uh, and show player claims so these are not land claims these are the BBB claims um, I'm going to add in another one for the land claim box uh, later down the road so uh, let's just untick that uh, let's remove the entities for now uh, if you want to jump to a player here will be a list of all the players on the server at the minute you can just double click on them let's make it a bit more obvious uh, so double click and you jump to that person and you jump to the layer that they're on as well so the height is important for a lot of this at the bottom here you can see uh, any well most requests that the editor is sending to the server and what's happening with them so you see there it, it got all the blocks it got all the items and it got all the entities it got the information from the server and then got all the prefabs on the server which brings us handily over to the right hand side well, you can see here is a list of all the prefabs that are available on the server. We'll go through that in a bit more detail in a bit. Uh, above that is the view mode. So you've got the player map here, which is like what you see when you open the map in the game. You click on chunks, and yeah, this one comes in a, a bit differently because um, it's got to be rendered inside the editor. But you can see something quite familiar there if you're used to messing about with the prefabs in the editor. This is uh, the same kind of thing but for the entire world. And you can see it will just slowly start filling in more and more information. And as you change the height it will re-render and show you the differences. Uh, all loot will show you anything that has a loot container or is, is classed as a container uh, in the game and you can mess about with those uh, again we'll do that in a little bit and loot this layer is the same thing as all loot but only shows you where it's on the specified layer so on layer 184 here yeah, there's obviously no well, there is some loot containers but way over there so we're just going to jump back to player map because it uh, looks prettiest and down here is a little mini map so as more and more of the world is downloaded you can see there it starts populating that uh, and you can click if you want to jump somewhere uh, if you ever see this pinky background that means there's been a problem in the back end of the editor um, where things aren't right as the as the map expands and gets bigger this this usually sorts itself out but if you're seeing this pink just be aware that normally when you click on somewhere in the map it will jump to that position and obviously it hasn't done that uh, but when that goes that function should work fine so yeah just something to be aware of there so what can you do with the editor uh, let's go through um, well first of all um, if you've got a server that's been running for a long time already um, and you want to get a quick cache of everything uh, I'd recommend running this download region and data or download map data uh, because as you can see this this will get information but it's quite slow as it expands out and these two functions or just go and grab everything well, it takes quite a long time to run um, but it's well worth it if you've got a, a huge server uh, if you ever want to uh, 
get rid of the local cache, like all the map files and all the chunk data that's held in the editor folder. Just click on that and it will, and it will reconnect and start downloading everything uh, as if it's a new, uh, a new install. So, um, let's go with, uh, actually no, I'll tell you what, what we'll do first is we shall insert a prefab. So, let's just jump back over to the game. Let's just find somewhere. Let's just explore this area a bit. So, there we are. So, um, inserting prefabs can be done through the, the world editor, so you just find uh, whatever you want to insert over in this list here. Uh, let's go with uh, burn, just because it's a bit more distinct in the area around it. So double click, and you get this little house icon. You can drag that to where you want it, uh, and if you jump back into the game, you should see a, a red square, and that indicates where it's going to be. So, uh, let's, can we just split that up? Uh, yep, so you can see it there. And if you uh, if you would change the height over here, you should see it apply in game. So you get it to a position that you want, and then right click and insert to world. You can set the rotation if you like um, for the prefab, 0, 1, 2 and 3, which are the only uh, valid options. Uh, set position, you can ignore, prepare area, you can ignore because that's done by the editor for you now. Remove will remove this, not the prefab in the game, there's no one do button on this guys, so just be careful when you're using it. Uh, but what we want to do is insert into the world, so just click that. And then the edit, the, sorry, the game should think about it for a while and go and do stuff. And there you can see we've inserted the prefab. So let's just move that off slightly. And there we can see we've got the prefab. Oh, we seem to have blown ourselves up. Oh dear. Wow, she's going for quite a while. Uh, I'd forgotten about the mines on the uh, the armor camp there. Let's just quickly jump back. So there we are. Um, we seem to have made a mistake and put it slightly too high because there was obviously ground in the prefab. So uh, what one of the functions of the editor will let you do is, well first um, we've inserted this prefab but it hasn't updated in the editor. Um, the in a, there's plans to make it auto update in a future version and some of the code's already in so sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But if you just want to refresh the local map, you can see that, and then holding the middle mouse button down, if you just select an area, and select the area you want, and release, and a bunch of errors has appeared. So, oh, that's fine. Uh, so there you can see um, the area has been updated locally. And now we can use that to define uh, resetting the chunk. Uh, don't worry about if you get loads of errors down here. Um, as I say, this is still a very early release. Um, there's lots of problems. It might crash. Just let me know if it does. Um, but anyway, back to it. So now we know the area we want to uh, reset. We can go to reset chunk. And what this does is it reverts it to however it would have been when it first got spawned. So <coughs> any buildings are reset, any trees are reset, any grounds put back in. 
Uh, and once again, just using the mouse middle button, uh, just select the area you want to, and let go, and you can see in game that it is resetting to how it was. But there is a bit of a difference. So if we have a closer look, you can see all this ground is lumpy, and that is to do with the densities that have been set in the area. Uh, but it's not actually a problem with the server, it's a problem with the client. So the client hasn't refreshed properly and that's why you're seeing all that, uh, that lumpiness. But if we just teleport away and we teleport back, you can see that once we've unloaded the chunks and reloaded them, all that lumpiness has gone away. So if you're ever having problems with the editor where it doesn't look quite right, or you've inserted a prefab and it hasn't appeared, if you just teleport away and come back again, it usually it usually sorts itself out. So yeah. Um what's up next? Oh, we were gonna sort that out, weren't we? So if we move that back uh, I mean, was it one or two layers? Let's go with two down. Right click insert server goes away and thinks about it and there you can see that's a little bit better isn't it um, so once you're happy with it you can right click and remove that gets rid of the box and that just means you can check out the prefab so yeah uh, what else have we got oh export chunks so if you've uh, built something in game or you want to take a backup of something, uh, you can export the chunk again using the middle mouse button. If you just highlight the area, it goes away and thinks about it. And then it opens it up in the editor for you uh, to either save or uh, mess about with. see the area that we exported and then you can save that uh, by default it will always save in your prefab folder as just exclamation mark will view a prefab if you save as you can change it to whatever you want <laughs> unless it crashes second I'll fix that in a bit um, so yeah there's the uh, the export function uh, what else have we got yeah okay. okay sorry for the quick interruption but uh, we had a few crashes and stuff there, so I just thought I'd uh, I'd re-record this bit. So um, there's a few bugs with the uh, next thing which I'm going to show you, which is the uh, loot finder or the um, the container editor. Uh, so if it doesn't work on the version you get first time around, don't worry, it'll be fixed. Maybe not for a while, but uh, it will be fixed. So anyway, uh, we're in game and we have this container here that we found. So in the editor, if you jump over to all loot, and it will generate uh, where it thinks there are loot containers. I'm um, pretty sure that this one is the one we're looking at. So if you double click on that, you should get a box open. Uh, if it pops up a box saying uh, no tile found or entity could not be opened or something like that, um, that's a bug. Uh, but if it, if it opens like this, then what you can do is, uh, here's a list of all the items that are available. You can double click to add them into the container and you can double click on them to set the amount. So if you save that, and let's just jump over, there you can see we've added the items. Uh, what you can also 
also do is let's just try and quickly find a flat area. Uh, let's jump back to player map and let's jump to me. So you can right click on the person and spawn items which gives you the same box. And you can just choose anything to drop. And when you click insert now it doesn't fall at your feet. I don't know why but for some reason the game is um, offsetting the values even though the things that I'm, sp I'm sending to the server are my exact position. You can see that they've spawned over here but they're always in like, you know, a chunk or two. So you can, you can do that, you can drop items on people uh, or modify chest contents while the game's running. Uh, the chess content editing doesn't work in single player uh, that's one of the restrictions um, it's just that in single player there's no way to notify the chess that there's been an update so all you end up doing is uh, wiping out the chess contents and nothing new appears so if you're in single player don't do that uh, but you, know, you should have access to the creative menu when you're in single player so uh, let's just see if this works now uh, zoom out a bit. So you click on the center of the city and you jump to the center of the city. Jump over to the middle of the mountains and you're in the middle of the mountains. Bottom city. Yeah. So uh, there is a few more stuff, but you know it's all broken and buggy, so I'm, I'm not going to show you. This has just been a, a quick intro into how to set it up and a quick overview of the features. So cheers, guys. Check it out. Excuse the bugs and the crashes. Uh, your data should be safe. Um, there's no corruption or anything going on. So, yeah, have a play. Let me know. Cheers, guys.